In this round of grass support tutorial, we want to use the Anomaly plugin to make this twisting tower. Uh, as you can see, when I change the steps, it's going to update. And then we can define the size, which is basically the size of the uh, polygon here. And the segments, you can see that I can make it in four segments and movement, which I will explain in this tutorial. Before we get started, uh, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Uh, consider subscribing. And if you don't know about anything about Grasshopper, uh, you can watch this uh, series and play this up here, which will help you to understand the basics. And also, if you want to learn more about Grasshopper, you can enroll in our course. We have definitions and lessons. Uh, I will also put the playlist up here which you can check it out okay let's get started from scratch before that i want to explain the steps we're going to take to model this in grasshopper uh, first of all uh, let me just uh, put that into the step one which will uh, help you to understand what's happening here uh, first we have uh, produced a polygon we modeled a polygon here which you can see it here and then we have used this anomaly plugin to make a recursive loop. So first, we're going to uh, move this polygon uh, in the Z direction. Basically, here it's in the Z direction. But because we want to make it a recursive, we have to put that in the normal direction. So we have extracted the plane and the vector, which will make the normal direction. So if, the, for example, this is the polygon, we will have this direction, and again, here. So this will help us to extract the normal direction. Uh, the next step is to scale it. So when we move it up, we can also scale it by a factor which we have used here. And you can see it here. And after that, we can rotate it again around the axis. So this is the rotation. And we have rotated this in uh, two times, one in the y axis and second in the z axis. Why the y axis is here is it's because, for example, let me show you here. Example, we have this polygon. Uh, we have moved this up, so we have it here. And because the fractal is going to be uh, recursive, what we want to do is to rotate this. Maybe a uh, yellow color will be good. Okay. In this direction for Y example, it's going to rotate this up and down. Okay, so it's going to be something like this, for example. And when we lock these together, it's going to give us that base module. After that, we can also rotate this uh, on the normal direction. So we can make it a little bit twisty, which you can see here. We can make the twisting thing happen. So here you can see that we have the scale, we have the rotation in the y direction, and then we have the twisting thing. That's it. And we're going to give that back to the loop. We're also going to loft this and get it out, which I will explain in this tutorial. For now, if I increase the steps, you can see it's going to just stack up all the module on together, scale it, rotate it, twist it, and so on. So uh, we can actually play with these numbers, uh, the movement, which is going to give it more height, scale, you can even scale it by one, which is going to give us the same uh, scaling thing. If you want to rotate this around, for example, if I give this a 20 degrees, and I want to make this a complete uh, rotation, uh, you have to divide 360 degrees to 20, like it's 18. Uh, for example, if I give this an 18, you can see that we have one uh, added up here. So it's just 1 minus 360, 360 degrees divided by this number minus 1. So it's going to be 17, for example. And you can see it catching up here. Uh, I can give that like a 6 edges. It's going to connect it better, you can see, because... For the rotation, it's like 360 degrees, and you have to have like that. So now you can even add the movement up and make it a bigger donut and those things. Uh, that is the base of the tutorial. We are going to also use some uh, tools like the event gate, which is from this uh, Heteroptera uh, plugin, which I will explain. Uh, be sure to watch the tutorial 
till the end because we're going to explain why we have used this. We're going to also use the Viverville plugin uh, to make these panels and finish this tutorial. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Uh, what I want to do is to go to the curve section primitive and select one of these polygons here. So this polygon is fine. I'm going to make this a polygon. And let me put the bifocals plug in here. Okay, that's the polygon. Uh, the plane is the XY plane, that's fine. The radius, we're gonna give that a number, which will make that a size slider. The segments is going to be from three to maybe 12. So we can also increase the segments, remember that. And we don't need a, a fillet radius, so it's going to be a polygon here. Okay, to use the Anomaly plugin, we have to put the plugin in the file, special folder, components folder, remember that, and then restart the Rhino Grasshopper. We will have an A here, and you can see that we have two uh, loops classic and fast the classic is going to give you some sort of animation when you change the parameters the fast one is going to just run the command so remember to just give this a classic one if you want to see some sort of animated looping and we have to connect the top to create the loop okay uh, the input is data i'm going to name this as a curve so this is the base or maybe polygon is better, so we are explaining. And that is actually for us to know which uh, input and output is related to the things we are defining. So these are the polygons, I'm going to give that to the polygon, okay? What I usually do is that uh, when I give the input here, I use the same uh, from the params menu to make it like that, and it's okay. Okay, so we have that. It's the repeating is zero, so we don't have any repeating. If I give that back to the polygon, for example, if I move that in the Z direction and I give it to the uh, exit, and uh, for example, I give that to three repeating steps, you can see that uh, the Anomaly plugin, if I double click, it's going to run. It's going to show you the last uh, loop, so I'm going to right click here and also record the data. So these are the basic steps you have to take. And here we go. Okay, so you can see that I can uh, define. If you just decrease that, you have to double click this. We're going to use that plugin to also uh, activate the loop if we, even if we decrease it. So that's the way we're going to use that plugin. Okay, let's get back to our looping section. <clears throat> uh, first, we're going to move that up <clears throat> in the Z direction. So we don't want to move that in the Z direction. We have to have some control in the normal direction of the polygon. So for example, if I uh, connect a plane, this is a trick you can use. If you connect a plane to a flat curve, it's going to give the plane of that. And then when you connect a vector to that plane, it's going to give you the normal direction. So if I give that here, you can see, let me just double click this. Uh, you can see that it's going to move one unit in the normal direction. So we're going to go to the mathematics and use this multiplication. And we're gonna give that a number. Uh, you can see that I can move that up. Okay, if I give that back to the loop, let's increase the steps. Uh, the problem with this one is that when I increase the uh, movement, I have to double click the loop to run it. So what I want to do is to add another parameter here, and that's the movement. So I'm going to just type uh, move for all of these D1s, and also you have to add another one at the end of the loop. So I'm going to name that move okay and you can define a number slider for the movement so i can give that to the move because the movement is going it's not going to change we have to give that back to the loop and also this is going to go to the multiplication okay that's not really hard what i have done is that instead of giving this a number slider i bring that into the loop and then give that to the number slider to the multiplication and also 
uh, I've connected the input and the output of the loops, the start and the end of the loops, so it's always going to use that number, okay? So if I double click this again, you can see this is going to update my loop when I just change these numbers. So this is the way we can define that, okay? So uh, first of all, let's just bring that back to step zero, double click this, okay? That's the movement. And remember that can, we can change that when we want. Uh, the next step was to uh, scale this. So I'm going to just scale. We have to scale that at the centroid. Uh, we can just define a curve. And I'm going to use this polygon center. This is, give, uh, this is going to give you three outputs, the center for the vertices, edges, and area. Because it's a simple polygon, it's all going to be the same. So center of the vertices is fine. It's fine. I'm going to give this a factor, so maybe a number smaller than one. Again, because I want to bring that into the loop, I'm going to just bring it here and add a scale. So remember that always uh, you can make this happen by just defining the inputs and the outputs on the loop start and the end. Uh, let's just disconnect this so you understand what I'm doing. Uh, first of all, this is the scale. Give that to the scale. It's going to go to the output because we want to always use that number. And we can also give that to the factor. Okay, turn everything off. That's the scaling factor, so I can just scale this. Okay. The next step is to rotate it. So I'm going to just uh, rotate 3D, rotate this around the centroid, the center of the polygon. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use the Y direction. I explained that we want to just give this a little bit of a rotating thing. Uh, because the angle is in radians, we want to bring that back into degrees, so I'm going to just right click here and put a degrees here and just define maybe 0 to 100 and, or maybe 80 degrees with two decimals. Okay, again we need another input which we can name this rotation 1. Okay and add another parameter here, which is rotation one. That's it. This is how you define different parameters in a Anomaly plugin, and I'm going to give that back to the rotation and also use it in the angle. So let's just turn this off. You can see that I am actually rotating this in the Y direction. Okay, let's just give this a little bit of a twist. So we can just finish the basics of the module. Uh, again, we can rotate this from the centroid. So here we go, from the center. The axis is going to be the Z direction of the plane. For example, this one is going to be this uh, direction. For this one is going to be the Z direction. It's going to change in each step. So we're going to go uh, to again, we can just uh, extract the plane. Let's just do that. And give this in the normal direction. Give that to the axis. Okay, and we can just say a degrees again, and define the twisting part. So I'm going to just define twist. And that's all what we want to do in this tutorial is to define this twisting thing. So I'm going to just put that here and name this a twist. Okay, <laughs> just copy this, give this a twist. Okay, so now we can give that to twist. Again, this is going to go back in the loop and it's going to go here to the angle. That's the way you can twist it. Okay, that's the basics of the polygons. So if I just increase the steps, you can see that we can change the scale. 
and let's turn off everything. The size, the segments, uh, the movement. Maybe we want to increase that movement so we have more control on the shape. And scaling. Then the rotation. You can even give this a negative number. So remember that you can change that. And actually the twist. So what we want to do is to also uh, produce these units here. Uh, we can simply bring that back to the polygon. You can see it here. Because we don't have the base of this, what I usually do, you can see that this is going to put each polygons in one group. I'm going to flatten this because we don't need the groups. And if you don't know about flatten graph and those things about the data trees, you can watch this tutorial and know more about it. So I'm going to just flatten this. And how can we add the base here? That's really easy. Uh, I'm going to use a curve. Just double click here to put a relay, make it better. Okay, I'm going to give that to the curve and then use the shift key to add it up. So that's it. That's how you can add all of them together and now we can just loft them from the surface freeform loft and you can see that you can loft it you can also go to the options loft options and select in the normal select this uh, straight maybe okay straight make that straight if you want to that's it so that's how you can do this and produce the base surface. Okay, for those who have watched this tutorial till here, I'm going to give you some tricks you can also use uh, to activate the steps. For example, if I decrease the rotation, okay, and also increase the scale, for example, I want to talk about the steps here for so for example if I change the repeat and decrease it you can see that the loop is not going to start uh, unless you double click here to give it a new input but there is a trigger that says if you want to trigger loop to restart you can give it a trigger okay so what you can use is to install this uh, uh, I think it's called <laughs> I don't know heteroptera tool and in the streaming what I have found that's going to kind of help us is the event gate so I'm going to just uh, select this event gate okay if you give this a data you can see that this data is going to give you uh, the new input and output that's not anything new but is new is really important you can see that when I change this uh, it's going to define if it's a new one or not. So if I give this to the trigger and give the data to the repeat, that means that the data is going to go straight to the repeat, but this says, is it new or not? The problem here is that you can see that this is not going to activate it unless we flip it because this is a true false, right? Uh, you can just simply go to the params menu and in the primitive, uh, we have this boolean, then give it to the trigger, and this is a trick you can use. Right click on the boolean and invert it. Okay. Now you can see that it's going to work. So you increase or you decrease that, that's going to run. So this is the trick you can use always with an Omni plugin to make it work and actually give you anything you want on the stepping side. Okay, now we have our base surface. This is the loft. I want to give this a frame and a window. Again, uh, what I want to do is to convert this into a mesh. So I'm going to go to the mesh utility and use this simple mesh. The reason I'm using the simple mesh is that because it's a simple mesh. It's basically uh, going to give you uh, the 
spaces is going to go into the meshes and that's fine that's what we need here that's it and if you install the Viverbird plugin you can also give this a frame for example if I go to the Viverbird I can use this picture frame and window I can give that here and give the meshes to here turn this off give this a thickness So you can see that I can give this a thickness. You can also uh, uh, thicken it with this Weaverbird mesh thicken. Maybe we want to give this a little bit of thickness, 1.25%. So that's it. Now we can go to the display and give this a custom preview. Or here and another one for the windows. Turn this off. I usually use swatch. SWAT is going to help us to find the swatch and give this a color, maybe something near black and another color for the windows. <clears throat> That's going to help us to make this and have a view of that. Okay, and you can see that this is the mesh it's really beautiful you will actually have it with the thickness if you want to okay so that's it now what we have to do is to just play with these numbers you can see that I can increase the scale change the number slider for the segments maybe put to six uh, play with the movement maybe we just want to give this uh, more movement bring it up that's it and the scale, uh, the rotation is really important. If I give it zero, you can see it's not going to uh, rotate it. But if I just give it a slight rotation, it's going to rotate. And then we can also give it a twist. So zero is not going to give it a twist. And more twisting will just produce a twist on it, like that. That's it. And you can also play with these numbers. For example, uh, you can give multiplications to this scaling thing. And bring it in and in each step make the scale bigger make the movement bigger make the rotation bigger or smaller for example or twist bigger or smaller so that's actually what you can do for more exercise if you want to and produce the results it's really easy uh, that's a tutorial of how you can make a twisting tower somehow uh, with this uh, anomaly plugin and finally use this Viverbird uh, remember to like and share this video so it's going to help us to produce more videos and also you can see that i can decrease this number okay thank you for watching and see you next time bye